Amen. Good morning. Happy Resurrection Sunday to you all, one and all. And we give God all the praise for bringing us all here today on this happy Resurrection Sunday. So right now, in this year, in the midst of the ep- of the, the pandemic, we begin to give God praise for what he did 2,000, over 2,000 years ago, when he sacrificed his son and he gave his life, Jesus gave his life for us and rose again on the third day. So we begin by singing and worshiping this day for the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has indeed made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen, amen, and amen. The song by Eddie James. Forever he shall reign 
and amen. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for what a blessing. You are alive, Jesus. You are alive. And with this, we give you praise and glory, for you are alive. You resurrected. You on the third day, you rose, and you defeated death, hell, and the grave. So, God, we give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. And we all say amen, amen, and amen. With this, after this, we're going to have a scripture reading by Irene Tucker, one of the members of Creative Christian Arts Ministries International. Please welcome her. Amen. Thank you, Miss Alice. The scripture lesson is taken from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, verses 1 through 12. I'll be reading from the King James Version of the Bible. Now, until the, upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came unto the sepulchre, bringing the spices which they had prepared, and certain others with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulchre. And they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. And it came to pass, as they were much perplexed thereabout, behold, two men stood by them in shining garments, as they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth. They said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here, he is risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered unto the hands of sinful men, and be crucified, and the third day rise again. And they remembered his words, and returned from the sepulchre, and told all these things unto the eleven and to the rest. It was Mary Magdalene and Joanna and Mary the mother of James and the other women that were with them that which told these things unto the apostles. And their words seemed to them as idle tales and they believed them not. Then arose Peter and ran unto the sepulcher and stooping down, he beheld the linen clothes laid by themselves and departed, wondering in himself at that which was to come, which was come to pass. The word of the Lord is blessed. Amen. Good morning. All right. Good. Awesome. Awesome word. Awesome word. Amen. Awesome word. We thank you so much, Irene, for that wonderful, wonderful contribution. Now we take it to our ministry in poetry that is going to be coming from Cleopatra Cox. And we will take it to her now. She is also a member. These are, this is all done by the members of Creative Christian Arts Ministries International, at least a portion of us who are putting on this presentation. So we thank you, Lord God, for it all. And we give you praise. Cleo, take it away. Amen, amen. Thank you. Thank you, Elder Alice. Um, I'm going to just do a small poem today. It's, it's not an original, but it is something that touched my heart and I wanted to share it. The Savior who died in our stead now has risen from the dead. The Lord and Savior Jesus Christ from that grave to new life. Those who saw him could rejoice, praising God with one voice in light that he has now arisen eternal life to us god has given christ who died for all man's sins now in power can reign within in every believer in their heart once residing he will not depart new life he gives to you and me life that extends into eternity 
since he rose, we're not the same, readying us for eternal reign. When on earth believers died, they were given bodies glorified. Through the power of his name, each body by God is changed. That changed assured to you and I, by Christ who reigns on high. Change gained from only one, Jesus Christ, God's eternal son. All authority was given to Jesus to change the heart of us all, leading us when we follow Christ to point all others to new life. Pointing men to who we've adored, Jesus Christ, our risen Lord, the only one with power to give to all believers new life to live. The spotless lamb claimed victory for sinners like you and me. Victory over both sin and death providing for his eternal breath. When we depart from this earth, then glorified through new birth, to reign with Christ forevermore upon reaching that eternal shore. May we never forget this auspicious day that our Savior took the keys to death, hell, and the grave so that you and I can spend eternity with God in heaven, safe and free. Amen. Amen. Wonderful rendition, Cleopatra. Thank you so very much for that wonderful poem. He is risen. He is risen. And now following this, we are going to have another selection coming from Natasha Davis. Wave, Natasha. Give them a wave, Natasha. And this is a pre-recording showing her wonderful rendition of Because He Lives. Join with me as we share, as we share the screen. Of glory and 
Amen. Thank you, Lord God, for such a wonderful rendition. Thank you. Thank you, Natasha, for that wonderful rendition. And we thank you, Lord God, for what you have done. Because you live, we can see tomorrow. Because you live, all fear, all fear of this pandemic, all fear of all fears that come against us is gone. Because we know that God holds the future and life is worth the living. <laughs> because he lives. Amen. Amen. So now we are going to go from there straight to another member of Creative Christian Arts Ministries. That is no other than the than Onisha Lewis, who will be dancing Remember Me. So please bear with me as we begin to share, share the screen. Special meal, my friends, for this will be our last time together. I will be betrayed, and then they'll be the trouble, my death. Eat this bread. for that wonderful rendition of Remember Me. This has been a wonderful presentation put on by a portion of our, uh, some of the members of Creative Christian Arts Ministries International. And we give you wonderful, wonderful Resurrection Sunday, starting with, starting with He's Alive by, by Eddie James. Start going to the scripture reading, going to the poetry and the song, song because he lives and ending with remember me. So Father, even now we thank you for this wonderful presentation and we take it on to our wonderful, wonderful pastor who is going to be delivering a word from the Lord on this wonderful Resurrection Sunday. Be blessed Bahamas, be blessed people, be blessed and be 
alive. Be safe and be blessed. For God is alive. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning, Bahamas. Good morning, Facebook family. And good morning, friends all over the world. This is Apostle Henry Higgins from Creative Christian Arts Ministries International. And we are here this morning to bring you our Resurrection Sunday service. And so we thank you for joining us. We thank you for following us. And we pray that this day will be a gracious, happy Resurrection Sunday for you as we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We're going to begin this service with our sounding of our shofar, recognizing that Jesus Christ is alive. Thank you so much, Derek and Michael, as you have made created. Sounded the sound this morning that Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, is alive. And you know we are excited because we know that our Redeemer lives. And so this morning, our, our own Dr. Ann Higgins, the Queen, my Queen this morning, the woman of God is going to bring to you ministry in dance. It is a song I know my Redeemer lives. By. Oh, mother. We do not own the rights of the song, and so we thank you for worshiping him with us.
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. He lives. He lives. He lives in me, and he lives in you. Our Redeemer truly lives. May this day, Resurrection Day, be the day that you allow God to live on the inside of you. God bless you on Resurrection Morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, because we know our Redeemer lives. Where you are this morning, if you know your Redeemer lives, just open your mouth and give God a praise this morning because we are excited this morning because we know that Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, lives. Listen, people of God, this morning we know that there are many people who worship other gods, but I've come to tell you this morning, those other gods that they worship are dead. Muhammad is dead. Buddha is dead. Hilly Selassie is dead. Confucius is dead. But this morning we know that Jesus Christ is alive and well. So we give God praise and praise. Thank you so much, Dr. Higgins, for that wonderful time of ministry this morning in dance. I know my Redeemer lives. Listen, people, I have an assurance this morning that my Redeemer lives. I want to take this opportunity to welcome you to our broadcast this morning, wherever you are. Without part of the world you in, I want to welcome you if you are in the family islands, in Grand Bahama, in Anagua, in Lutheran Abaco. I want to welcome you this morning if you are in the United States, if you are in Canada, if you are in France, if you are in London. We welcome you and we thank you for joining with us this morning. And now it's time for the word of the Lord. We have a word from God this morning and we're going to take this opportunity to share the word with you. If you have your Bibles, I want you to turn your Bibles to Matthew chapter 28, Matthew chapter 28, and we'll be reading from verse 1, Matthew chapter 28, Matthew chapter 28, and we'll be reading from verse 1. I want to say good morning to all of the family members, those who are watching my Facebook, we love you, we appreciate you, God bless you, we cannot gather now, but we will gather in time, and of course our building is empty, but the church is not empty, we are full because we are the church, and we are full of the glory of God this morning. And so we are praising God wherever we are this morning. Our, our homes have become a place of worship. Our homes have become a place of praise. Our homes have become a place of the prophetic. Our homes have become a place of declaration and decree. And finally, God is getting our attention during this time. We give God praise and praise. The reading from Matthew chapter 20, it says, In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to draw toward the first day of the week, he Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulchre. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. His countenance was like lightning and his raiment white as snow. And for fear of him, the keepers did shake and became as dead men. And the angel answered and said unto the woman, Fear not ye, for I know that he seek Jesus which was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen, as he said. Come see the place where the Lord lay, and go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And behold, he goes before you into Galilee. Therefore, there shall ye see him. Lo, I have told you. And they departed quickly from the sepulchre with fear and great joy, and did run to bring his disciples' word. And so just as Mary Magdalene and Mary ran to bring the disciples' words, I am running this morning to bring you the word of the Lord, that Jesus Christ is indeed risen. So for the sport, for the short time, we're going to talk about, it is my time for my resurrection. It is my time for my resurrection. And listen, people of God, the word of God, resurrection simply means bringing the dead back to life. Bringing the dead back to life. And we know that in the story of the, of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, we know that Jesus, two, two days ago, we celebrated his, his, three days ago, sorry, we celebrated his death and his burial. We know that he died on the cross for our sins. And because him dying, we have a right to the tree of life. And when he died, he was placed in a tomb. And he told them that then I three days, but many people did not believe him. 
even his own disciples who were with him didn't believe him. And you know what puzzled me about that? Is his disciples, they saw him raise Lazarus from the dead, but they still doubted him. They saw him raise Jairus' daughter from the dead, but they still doubted him. How can you doubt someone when you see him raise someone from the dead? When you see him resurrected Jairus' daughter, when you saw him resurrected Lazarus, Lazarus came forth from the tomb. Jesus said, come forth, and Lazarus came, and, and, and Lazarus came forth. And so I want to, you to understand that this is not a season to doubt that Jesus rose from the dead. Many people, atheists and other scientists, will try to tell us this is fake news. But I've got good news this morning. I have come to tell you that the resurrection of Jesus Christ is not fake news. The resurrection of Jesus Christ is real news and it's good news. And if Jesus is resurrected the same way he was resurrected, he has placed the power in you so that you can be resurrected as well. And so I thank God for the time of resurrection when Jesus, that morning, when the earthquake happened and the angel came and rolled back the stone. And when he rolled back the stone, Jesus came out in all of his glory. He didn't come out the same way he was before. When he came out, he was in his glory. He was in a transfigured state. He was in a state where you could not touch him. He was in a state where... He was at a whole different level. He was in a state where he was at a new dimension. And so I want to tell you this morning that God is taking you through some things. He is taking you through this season. But when you come out, you're going to be untouchable. Hallelujah. When you come out, you're going to be at a whole new dimension. When you come out, you're going to be at a, at a whole different level. When you come out of this, whatever you are going through, when you come out today, you are coming out in shining glory. The glory of God is going to rest upon you. The power of God is going to rest upon you. The anointing of God is going to rest upon you. And when he rests his glory upon you, you coming out better than you was before. People of God, we are in a season of Passover. We are in a season of unleavened bread. Today we are celebrating Passover. We are in the 18th day of the day of Nisan. And so on the 18th day of Nisan, we are celebrating the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We are going through turmoils all over the world now. Every country is faced with a turmoil. But I come to tell you that this is our this is our season of resurrection and God is bringing us out of every turmoil. God is bringing us out of every situation. He is bringing us out of every problem. And your Mary and your Magdalene's will be there to see it. They are, your Peter's and, and your John's will be there to witness it. The ones who you told them, listen, I will be back. You will see me again. And I will come back on the third day. So today is your third day. I decree and declare that today is your third day. This is your day of resurrection. This is your day of coming back to life. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. And so as we read the scriptures, morning, we see that the, the, the children of Israel, that God was in a time of Sabbath. So the day after Jesus' death was the Sabbath. It was a time of rest. Listen, when God gives us rest, we are to take the rest. We are, the whole world right now is in a time of Sabbath. The whole world is a time of rest. And some of us are still fighting the rest. Listen, take the rest and enjoy the rest. Because when God brings you out of this rest, then there will be time, much time to much time to do work, and there will be much work to do. And it says that the first day of the week, which is today, Mary, Margaret, and the other Mary went to the sepulchre. They went to the, the sepulchre is the tomb. They went to the place where Jesus was buried. And it says, and behold, there was a great earthquake. Now, the interesting thing was, God is such a control of God. God didn't release an earthquake. To, to destroy the whole nation. He released an earthquake just to break open a grave. Hallelujah. When the earthquake came, the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and the angel sat upon the stone. I come to tell you this morning that the thing that they were trying to keep you in, the devil tried to keep you in, the devil tried to lock you in, the devil has tried to tie you down. I declare today that the angel has been released, an earthquake has been released on your behalf today and the earthquake is rolling back the very thing that has tried to hold you down and your angel has been released to roll back your stone and your angel is now sitting on your stone declaring victory 
in your name. Hallelujah. Today you have the victory. Today you have victory over anything and everything that has tried to destroy you, that has tried to keep you down, that has tried to pull you back. You today have the victory. And so the Lord said to me that he wants to resurrect the body of Christ. We know Jesus says that I am the way, I am the truth, and I am, in the, I am the life. And so he put us in a tomb season. He put us in a rest season. He put us in a period where we, where we can't do all the things that we want to do. He put us in a place where we have to do things differently. We have to work things differently. So I've come to tell you this morning that listen, Jesus' resurrection was not a comeback. Jesus' resurrection was a new start of a new thing. You see, because when Jesus was resurrected, while he was on earth, out of his resurrection came the church, a new thing. Out of his resurrection came power, resurrection power. So resurrection power was brought to the earth for those of us who are believers. And because we have resurrection power, there is nothing in our life that is supposed to be, remain dead. Everything in our life is supposed to be brought to life because we have resurrection power. So what the Lord said to me this morning is he want to resurrect your faith this morning. So many of us, because of what we're going through, because of the situation in the world, we have lost faith. This morning, God says, I want to resurrect your faith. He wants you your faith to be like the woman who had so much faith that who had the issue of birth. And she said, I just want to touch the hem. Of Jesus' garment. That's in Luke chapter 8. She said, if I touch the hem of his garment, I know I'd be made whole. And so she just, she pressed her way through the crowd. And she pushed her way through the crowd. While people were trying to hold her back. She pushed her way through the crowd. And while she pushed her way through the crowd, she got to the hem of his garment. She didn't even need Jesus to hold her hand. She didn't need Jesus to lay hand on her. All she needed was Jesus. All she needed was Jesus, the hem of his garment, to be touched. She was going through a situation, an issue of blood, that she needed resurrection in her life. She needed resurrection in her healing. She needed resurrection in her body. She needed resurrection in health. She had this issue of blood for 12 years. I'm looking at Luke chapter 8 and verse, four, and verse, verse 43. It says, And a woman having an issue of blood 12 years, which had spent all her living upon physicians. Neither could be healed of any. You hear that? This woman had spent every dollar she had trying to get her resurrection, trying to get a resurrection in her body, trying to get her body back to normal, trying to get a heal in the body. And so the Bible says in verse 44, the woman came behind him and touched the hem of his garment and immediately an issue of blood Staunch. I come to tell you this morning that if you touch Jesus today, if you reach out to Jesus, you will receive an immediate healing in every area of your body where you are sick, where it's cancer, where it's coronavirus, where it's AIDS, where it's diabetes, whatever is this morning, Jesus is here to heal you. He is here to resurrect your body this morning. He is here to give you a resurrection in your body. Every sickness and every, and every disease has the bow. To the name of Jesus. Every sickness and every disease has to bow to the name of Jesus. So I declare today that if you reach out and touch Jesus, that you will be resurrected in your body and healing will come to your body today in the mighty name of Jesus. And Jesus said in verse 45 of chapter Luke chapter, who touched me? And everybody denied. Peter and they that were with him. And master and said, Master, this multitude is strong, press thee. And say thee who touched me. And Jesus said, Somebody have touched me. For I perceive that the virtue is gone out of me. People of God, we need the virtue of Jesus to touch our body. It is the virtue of him that touches our body and heals our body and resurrects our body. So that is what we've got to go after in this season. If it is. We need the virtue, the power, the anointing of God, of Jesus Christ to rest on us today so that we can be healed. And then the woman saw, verse 47 says, and then the woman saw that she was not hit. She came trembling and falling down before him. She declared unto him before all the people for what cause she had touched him and how she was healed immediately. She didn't even want, to, want people to know that it was her who touched Jesus. 
but at a certain point she couldn't hide no more. So she had to come out and she had to be truthful. She says, it was me who touched. And the minute I touched you, I was healed. You see, and, and so Jesus said to her, daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith had made thee whole. Go in peace. It was of faith. It was of faith. I want to say that again. It was of faith that brought for her resurrection. And I want to tell you this morning, it is your faith. Your faith in Jesus. Your faith in Jesus Christ that will bring forth your resurrection this morning. God, he is here. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He is not. He is the resurrection and the life. So after your resurrection, you will have a life and you will have a life more abundantly. So I decree and declare this morning that your resurrection and your healing is here for you today. In the name of Jesus. Then Jesus said, Jesus, the Lord said to me, tell them, today I want to resurrect their calling. I want to resurrect their calling. I want to resurrect their vocation. Because for many of us, we have put our calling and our vocation on the side. We have put our assignments and what God has called us to do on the side. We have, we have, we have allowed the pressures of this life and the things of this world and circumstances and situations to put our calling on the side, to put our vocation on the side. For many of us, we've allowed man to stand on our calling. We've allowed man to stop us from stepping into the visions, the ideas that God has given us. You have allowed people to tell you, you ain't ready. You have allowed people to tell you, you ain't ready yet. This is not your time. This is not your season. Listen, people of God, this is your time and your season. And today, God has come to resurrect your calling. He has come to resurrect your vacation, vocation. So this is the day. Whatever you've been called to do, you are in a season now of preparation. Because while you are in the lockdown, while you are in, in the curfew, while you are under the divine interruption, this is your time to prepare. This is your time to reset. This is your time to refocus. And this is your time to relaunch. So whatever they have tried to stop before, whatever the demons and the devils have tried to stop before, this is the time for resurrection. And this is time for you to be in preparation. To prepare yourself for what God has called you to do. So when you come out of here, you will be good and ready. You will be ready to go. You will be ready for battle. You will be ready. Listen, the children of Israel were in Egypt for 430 years. And when it was time for them to go, that's what we're celebrating now in Passover. The Lord shut them in. And when he shut them in, he said, now I want you to get the lamb, put it over your blood, because I'm sending the death angel through the land of Egypt. And when I send the death angel, I'm going to kill all the firstborn. The next morning you are to get ready and get out. Be prepared. Pack your bag. Pack your shoes. Pack everything. Be prepared. Listen, people of God. Prepare yourself for what God is going to do when we come out of this lockdown. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. God wants to resurrect your calling. This is the season now to prepare. When the children of Israel walked out of Egypt, they walked out of Egypt in battle formation. They walked out of Egypt. Now that was amazing to me. According to, to Exodus chapter 13, they walked out in battle formation, but they did not have any weapons because they were slaves. The weapons were Egyptians had the weapons. But God had them moving in battle formation prepared for battle. Why? Because they didn't have to fight. God was going to fight their battle on fight the battle on their behalf. What the song say? The battle is not mine. The battle is not yours. It belongs to the Lord. But they marched out in battle formation. And what God did, like He did this morning in this word, He sent an angel to protect them. As they travel, as they move, he said, a cloud of pillar by day and a cloud of fire by night. As they move and they were ready to go, God was doing something new after the lockdown. God was, God was getting ready to set up a new nation. He was setting up Israel for the first time as a nation. They were just the children of Israel in Egypt. But when they came out of Egypt, they were the nation of Israel. And God is getting ready to set you up in something new. So when you come out of this, God is going to resurrect your calling. So what you were before, you will not be the same. You just won't be the children of, you will be a nation. You will be a called out one. You will be a set aside one. And there will be nothing or no one that can stop what God has for you. And so today I want to encourage you. God wants to resurrect your calling. He wants to give you a new, a new assignment. Peter knows when God called him, in, in, when Jesus called him in Luke chapter 5, they used to fish for fish. But when, God, when Jesus called them, he called them, moved them into a new assignment. They no longer became fishermen of fish. 
they became fishers of men. And that is our mandate. We are getting ready to prepare, preparing ourselves for the greatest harvest of souls on this earth. Listen, people of God, every pastor, every, every preacher, every evangelist, this is time, this is the season where the evangelists, the pastors, the apostles, all of us are preparing ourselves for evangelism. Why? Because we have been called to do the great work of evangelism according to 1 Timothy. And so we have to prepare ourselves. We are preparing our ministries to do the work of an evangelist. We're preparing the evangelists to do their work. Why? Because we're going to, God is resurrecting our calling in the sea. And today I declare, God wants to resurrect your calling. The other thing God wants to do, God wants to resurrect wreck your hope. Listen, people, I'm looking at Luke chapter 3. God wants to wreck them. To resurrect your hope. Luke chapter 3, verses 4 and verse 6. It says, As it is written in the book of the words of Isaiah the prophet, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make way his path straight. Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain hill shall be brought low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough way shall be made smooth, and all flesh, hallelujah, shall see. The salvation of God. Hey, this was John the Baptist preaching. John the Baptist had a hope that he was set as the forerunner of Christ, but his hope was that Jesus was coming. And John the Baptist came in the, out of the wilderness crying, Make your path straight. Prepare ye the way of the, of the Lord. Every mountain shall be filled, and every valley shall be filled, and every mountain hill shall be brought low. Because why? Because God was coming, because Christ was coming in the flesh. He said, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. So John was preaching a hope, a hope that Jesus Christ was coming. What is your hope today? What are you hoping for? Then you got a God, Jesus Christ, wants to resurrect your hope. Through his resurrection today, your hope is resurrected. Your hope, your hope is being fulfilled. Your hope will come to pass. Whatever you're hoping for, you will see. You will see, John was able to see Jesus Christ come on the earth. It was so powerful that John just didn't see Jesus Christ come. John was actually the cousin to Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. His mother and, and, and Mary, Jesus, when they met, John left in the womb because he knew that the Messiah was in the womb next to him. Hallelujah. And so when, they, when Jesus came to down, it was time to be baptized. He had no other choice than to go to John the Baptist. And I'm cut to tell this morning that you are in a season of leaping. Your gift is leaping. Your, your, your assignment is leaping in the womb and you connect to the right person. But you got to have that hope in your spirit that whatever God has given you to come to pass will come to pass. So in this season, you need your faith. You need your calling and you need your hope. And then people of God, in this season... God, Jesus, to God took me to John chapter 4 and verse 30. And then he says, today I want to resurrect your joy. I want to resurrect your joy. I want to resurrect your joy. Listen, people. The joy of the Lord is our strength. The Bible says that he's going to turn our mourning into, dark, dark, into, dark, into dancing and our sadness into joy. Listen, people of God. This is our season of joy. Whatever has made you sad, whatever has kept you down, whatever has, has filled you with oppression and depression, today you've got to reach out to Jesus and have your joy resurrected. He is the only one who can resurrect your joy. So whatever it is in your life that has been making, giving you trouble, that has been stressing you out, that has been causing you not to have joy, that has been causing you not to have peace, this is the day. This is your resurrection of your joy. And you've got, and Jesus has been resurrected. And because he has been resurrected, your joy today is also resurrected. Your hope today is resurrected. Your peace today is, re is resurrected. Your calling today is resurrected. Your faith today is resurrected. Today, God has given you joy and speakable and full of glory. He's the half of that little. People don't wonder why you're so excited. People don't wonder why. What happened last week? You weren't like this. Yesterday you were oppressed. The day before you were depressed. But today I have a new joy. I have joy, joy. Jesus has become the center of your joy. Jesus has become the center of your joy. Today, make Jesus the center of your joy. Just as he has been resurrected today, he is here to resurrect your joy. Hallelujah. And then the last thing Jesus said to me, he said, the Lord said, he said, Go to Ezekiel 37, because today I want to resurrect some lives. 
And he said, go to Ezekiel 37. And we know Ezekiel 37 quite well. That's the story of the dry bones. We know when the dry bones were in the valley and the prophet began to speak. And he said, the hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of dry bones. And so here the prophet Ezekiel is set, is, the spirit of the Lord takes him down into the valley of dry bones. I, I, I said you, they allow the spirit of the Lord to carry you down into your valley of dry bones today. You need a resurrection. No use you. Many of us are running from the, from the dry bones. Many of us are running from the, from, from the dead situation. We're trying to hide ourselves from the situation that have been trying to, that are dead in our life. And, but, but today, God said, do something different. Ezekiel said, the spirit of the Lord took me into the valley and set me down in the midst of the valley, which are full of bones. That's the place you got to be today. You got to say, I want to go right in the midst of my dry bone. I won't go right in the midst of the dead situation. I won't go right in the midst of the dead place. And then verse 2 tells that and caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley. And lo, there they were very dry. So we've found ourselves in, in places or we have situations in our life where it's very, very dry. And it looks like there's no hope of renewal. There's no hope of revival. There's no hope of reset. There's no hope of relaunch. There's no hope of refocus. Look at the vision we had. It's so dead now. It nothing could be done with it. It's been on the shelf so long. The dust together. It takes you too much energy to shake the dust and the cobwebs up. But he, the Lord said unto Ezekiel, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answer the Lord God, thou knowest. So listen, Ezekiel wasn't even sure. He, Ezekiel said, God, you know. If these bones can live. I don't know. You see, that is the situation. Many of us are doubting and have already lost hope and lost faith in what God has given us. As far as we can say, that dead, that done with, that is finished. We ain't dealing with that no more. But here, he said, verse 4 says, Again he sent to me, prophesy upon these bones and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Verse 5. Thus said the Lord God unto the bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you, and will bring up flesh upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and ye shall live, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. So here the Lord is saying to us, this is the year of the mouth. This is the year to prophesy, to decree and declare to your, dead, to your dry situation. This is the year of the mouth. 5, 7, 8, 0. Oh. A he means play, which means wide mouth. So whatever we speak, whatever we decree, Job 22 and 28 says that it shall be established for us and light shall shine on our ways. And so, in verse, God tells them, when you begin to prophesy, this is what I will do. I will put breath in the bones. I will put flesh on the bones. God said, when you begin to prophesy, God says, not me, you prophesy. So I'm saying to you today, whatever situation you find yourself, this is your day to prophesy, to bring resurrection to your dead situation, to bring resurrection to your dead life, to bring resurrection to your dry bones. Verse 6 says, sorry, verse 7 says of chapter 37, Ezekiel, so I prophesied, I was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a noise, and behold, a shaking and the bones came together, bone to his bone. You see that? The minute I began to prophesy, something began to happen in the spirit. The minute I began to prophesy, something began to move. The minute I began to prophesy, something began to shake. The minute you begin to prophesy, God will begin to move on your behalf. The minute you begin to decree and declare, God starts to move on your behalf. Your decree and your declarations in the year of the mouth will cause. Hallelujah. Will cause God to move on your behalf. Praise the Lord. So, verse 8 says, And then I behold, lo, the sinews and the flesh came up upon them, and the skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. The man he began to speak, God began to tell him, began to do what he told him he was going to do. See, what you got to understand is, God 
always does what he says. He told Ezekiel, when you begin to prophesy, I'm going to cause bones to come upon you. I'm going to cause the bones to move. I'm going to cause flesh and the news to, become a, to come upon them. And the minute he began to prophesy, flesh came on the body. When the minute you begin to prophesy, flesh will come on your body. The minute you begin to prophesy, your dead situation will then start to resurrect itself. And verse 9 says, Then he said unto me, Prophesy unto the wind. Prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, Thus said the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain that they may live. So God gives them another instruction. And what I like about this is, when God gives an instruction, we have to follow. He says, Prophesy first to the bones, and then prophesy to the winds. So there were two prophetic moves. That he had to do. See, some of us, we prophesy once, and we prophesy to one part of the situation, but we don't prophesy to the entire situation. And because we don't prophesy to the entire situation, the, the, the situation or the problem may only come halfway. But when you prophesy to every part of the dead body, when you prophesy to every part of the dry bone, you prophesy to the bone, and now you got to prophesy to the wind, because it's the wind that is going to bring the breath. So many of us are declaring things, but we didn't prophesy to the wind. There is a wind that is blowing. There is a wind that has to blow. Even as some of us have been prophesying over this coronavirus, but you've got to prophesy to the wind. The wind has to blow. In, 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 the, in the book of Genesis, when, when God remembered Noah, in, 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 in Genesis chapter 8, the Bible said, God remembered Noah and him in the ark while they were in isolation. And the Bible said, God caused a wind to blow over the earth. And when the wind blew over the earth, the water began to obey. The water began to go down. The water began to obey. And so we need to prophesy, first of all, to the situation, but we also need to prophesy to the wind. The wind is going to move on your behalf and do what needs to be done. Hallelujah. And so thus said the Lord God, come from the four winds. Hallelujah. Boy, this is sweet this morning. Listen, Ezekiel didn't call the east wind the no or the north wind or the south wind, or the west wind. Ezekiel prophesied to the four winds. He prophesied to the east, the west, the north, and the south. Listen, sometimes the situation is so dead, you need the four winds. And that's what we need right now in this world. We need to prophesy to the four winds. And he said, he prophesied, and he said, O breath, and breathe upon these sleeves that they may live. So he prophesied to the four winds, and then he prophesied to the four winds. Listen what happened. For then, so I prophesied as he commanded me. See, he didn't, he didn't switch to prophecy. He prophesied as he commanded him. There are many of us who when we prophesy, we prophesy in part because we prophesy what people want to hear. No, no, no. We have to prophesy what the Lord says. We, we can't prophesy to please the, the spirit of people no more. We have to, that's why we have to do something different in this new season. We can't prophesy church people, our prophets, our prophetic word. And we have to prophesy what God says and what God says only. So I prophesied, verse 10 of 37. And he commanded me, and the breath came into them. And they lived and stood upon their feet, an exceeding great army. Then he said unto me, son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are dry and our hope is lost. We are cut off from our part. What God was saying right here was that these bones represented the nation of Israel. They were dry. They were cut off. They, they, they had left God and moved away from him. And so today, God wants to resurrect the nation of the Bahamas. That, to me, represents the nation of the Bahamas. We have walked away from God. And the bones are dry. Now he had to do one more prophecy. In verse 12. He said, therefore I prophesy and say unto them, Thus said the Lord God, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come up out of your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord. whom I have opened your graves, O my people, and brought you up out of your graves. And shall put my spirit in you and ye shall live. And I shall place you in your own land, then you shall know that I am the Lord. I have spoken it and performed it, said the Lord. People of God today, your resurrection is here. The Bahamas, your resurrection is here. Your, bah the bah the, 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 your resurrection is here, Bahamas. He said, Behold, the bones are dry. But Ezekiel had to prophesy one more time. Ezekiel had to prophesy to the people and say, 
I will open your grave today. I prophesy to you that God is opening your grave. I will cause you to come up out of your grave. Wherever, whatever grave that they have put you in, that they have buried you in, I declare today that this is the day that God is bringing you up out of your grave today. And he's going to bring you into the land of Israel. He's going to bring you into your land this morning. He's going to bring you into your blessing this morning. He's going to bring you into your breakthrough this morning. He's going to bring you into your calling this morning. He is going to bring you into your assignment. I prophesy today to you. I prophesy to you today and say, come forth. I prophesy you today and say, come forth in the name of Jesus. I prophesy you get up, rise up, get out of that grave today in the name of Jesus. This is your day. And you know the exciting thing about all of this is them same people who put you in the grave, they're coming back to look to see where you is. They're coming back on your third day. On the third day to see if you're still in the grave. But I declare today that when they come back, what they're looking for, they ain't going to find. Because you will no longer be there today as we prophesy to you today that this is your day of resurrection. This is your day that God is bringing you out. And because this is your day that God is bringing you out, listen, when they come look for you, like the disciples came and look for Jesus, you will not be there. They will not be able to find you. You will be gone. Why? Because this is your day of resurrection. God today is resurrecting your life. He is resurrecting your joy. He is resurrecting your hope. He is resurrecting your calling. He is resurrecting your faith. Today God has given you a brand new day. He's given you a brand new season. So you are in a season of resurrection. You are not on a comeback. You are in a new move for God. You are in a new season. This is the move that God is coming for in the next phase of his life. Now listen. In John chapter 20, when Jesus reappears to the disciples, what happened? Their hope, their calling, their faith, and their life was resurrected. You see, they had lost, they had lost Jesus. And they thought they would not see him anymore. But when they saw him after his resurrection, their faith was lifted. Their hope was called. Their, 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 their joy was lifted. Lifted and resurrected. Today, God wants to turn your grave into gardens. Today, God wants to give you mourning for dancing. Today, God wants to turn you into turn your bones into a mighty army. Today, God wants to do a new thing in your life today. Today, I declare the resurrection, the resurrection power of Jesus Christ on your life today in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. This is the morning when Christ is coming to put us back together. Don't care what, how far apart you are. Don't care how they've tried to destroy you. Don't care how they match you. This is your day of resurrection. He was resurrected today so that we can have resurrection. He says, I am the resurrection and the life. Listen, Jesus is the resurrection and the life. So when you have resurrection today, because he resurrects you, he will bring you back to life today. So I decree in the kind of day that he's turning your grave into garden. He's turning your morning into dancing. He's turning your sadness into joy today. And you will have, you will have gladness. You will have peace. You will have joy. Your faith is lifted today in the mighty name of Jesus. And you are going to a new dimension. I declare the power of God upon your life. I declare the glory of God upon your life. I declare the grace of God upon your life. I declare that you are coming out of this with your possession. You are coming out of this with the spoils. When your, when your bones come back together. When your flesh come back together. God has much in store for you to do. I decree it and I declare it. Today in the name of Jesus. Thank you Father. Now, God, I bless you and I praise you. I pray for these people today. Under the sound of my voice, God, I cover them today. And I thank you that as you have released your word today, that every dead situation is coming back to life. I pray for the backslider today. I pray that their dead life in sin is coming back to life. I pray for the unsaved today, God. I thank you that their dead, their dead life is their dead life is coming back today in the name of Jesus. I thank you for your resurrection power that will hit the Bahamas, that will hit the Bahamas. Your resurrection power will hit the hospitals and bring healing to those sick. 
in their bed from coronavirus. It goes through an isolation. I pray that your resurrection power will go throughout the Bahamas now. I decree and declare, oh God, that your resurrection power will hit the other nations of the world today in the name of Jesus as they admonish you and they declare that you are Lord and Savior as they worship you in the streets, as they worship you in their homes, as they worship you in the ark of safety. I decree and declare today that God, your resurrection power, will turn their graves into God today. I declare that you will give beauty for ashes today. I declare that you will turn sheen into glory today. I decree it and I declare that people of God, may the Lord God bless you. May his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. As we worship this morning with the sun, ah, he turned grave into gardens. He gave beauty for ashes. You turn sheen into glory because you're the only one who can. Be one. Yes, we praise you, God. Thank you, Lord. You turn grave to God. You turn bones, bones into armies. You turn seas, seas into highway. You're the only, the one who can. Thank you, Lord. We bless you. We praise you. Today. We thank you, Father. May the Lord watch between me and me. And while we bless. Absent one for another. May God bless you and keep you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 And amen.